Perfect. They're now gone. Yeah, my name is Daniel. Um, I'm at the third, third place and going to quick you run you through my uh, solution. <clears throat> yeah, this was pretty standard. Let me start with my personal background. So I was a, a single person team like Elahi. Uh, my background is being a mathematician and I worked for eight years as head of data at a female health app. Um, I'm pretty new to deep learning. Uh, I actually just started deep learning uh, last year and I use Kaggle as a learning resource. Um, I find Kaggle really a great place to learn. And I made up for my lack of experience with putting in a lot of time into this competition. So I worked in this competition actually full time for two months. Here's uh, my summary. Um, from my perspective, the main um, challenges of the competition were the large data size, especially also the PNG format, um, made it hard to go to other resolutions. For example, I experimented with working with half resolution, um, but it took more time to go to a different resolution than to just uh, work with full resolution Im images. There was a pretty small number, I mean, <laughs> uh, you framed the competition as being really large. Still, from a deep learning standpoint, 518 labels is a very small amount of labels. And only 25 uh, TMA images in the training set also meant working with very little data from a machine learning standpoint. From the description, it was already clear that the training data has less variability or is, can be different from the test data. So there was definitely a need for the model generalizing beyond the training data. And specifically, there was this other label in the test data, which was not even present in the training data. Um, my summary was following this standard approach. This uh, uh, image is taken from the paper, a good feature extractor is all you need for weekly supervised pathology slide classification. And it's basically the process I used. So we first um, split the full image into tiles from the tiles or on the tiles, we then run a pre-trained uh, model to extract features. And then we have a second layer model that then uses these extracted features to, um, to classify the slides. So completely pre-trained model in the beginning to create the features and I didn't even adapt that. And then the second layer was a model I trained myself that classified the extracted features. Um, quick summary of the steps of the solution. So basically first tiling into small tiles so that uh, that was basically the tile size that the, the feature extractor needed. I used uh, Lunadino to extract features, which is a pre-trained model. It's a vision transformer that has been pre-trained um, for histopathology images. And on top of that, I then ran a PyTorch model um, basically as a classifier and the model was basically an attention-based uh, multiple instance learning model. Uh, I'll go into more detail on that later. Um, I trained on or I used more external data and I also used the uh, segmentation mass to create synthetic data because I felt that more data is quite crucial to get to a good performance. And on the hardware side, I just had a top end uh, gaming GPU, which I used for the competition. And it took about five hours to do feature extraction on my whole data set, and then about 30 minutes to train my model. So it was all, I would say, relatively fast on a modest GPU. And really crucial for me was uh, to really optimize the data loading part. Um, loading the big PNG files was really challenging, and uh, using the PyVips library and doing highly parallel data loading was key to get the whole thing to work with all the data at inference time on the Kaggle uh, system. Yeah, I want to talk a bit more about data sets because I used some external data. So first, the um, justification. I was running into quite a bit of overfitting when I uh, ran my training and validation on my machine. I first tried to combat the overfitting by using a lot of classical regularization like dropout and weight decay. But even with super high values there, my um, overfitting wasn't getting better and it was already starting to impact general model performance. So I felt model regularization didn't really work well enough here to uh, get rid of all the overfitting. And that's why I thought more data will help here. Another reason why I felt more data is necessary is because the test data was different from the training data. And that meant 
I want a model that generalizes better. And one way to get the model to generalize better is to just train it on a more general data set, have more variability in the data set. Um, so in the end, I collected uh, 1,825 samples from lots of different sources that I'll name in a second. And on the right-hand side, you can see here um, the number of data points I had for each label. The interesting part here is that I collected 400 samples for other so that my model was also able to classify that well. Uh, here's an overview over the data sources I used. Uh, first step for me was creating synthetic data. So I basically used the segmentation mass to just cut out very small images, TMA sized, from the larger images. And then just um, via the healthy segmentation mass, basically create training samples of healthy tissue. And I also used the tumor masks to create some additional tumor images, of course, with the risk that they are um, um, kind of a repetition uh, of the full size image. I also use data from the cancer imaging archive. So the uh, Bivakizumab study, uh, almost 80 subjects, 250 gigabytes, and CPTAC, almost uh, or over 100 subjects and 55 gigabytes. I also found some uh, permissively licensed data from the Harmony lab. That's 80 more subjects, uh, 113 gigabytes. And then because I felt I need more uh, examples of healthy ovaries, I really uh, went uh, scanning the whole internet and the best I could find with the right uh, licensing labels were some uh, digital microscopy uh, apps on which I then screenshotted some data to get some more healthy uh, examples. And they were usually also in the TMA, like in similar pixel size in the TMA images. And I also took 60 images from the Stanford Tissue Microarray database. They were not all H and E stained, which I thought is of course problematic, um, but they looked actually similar enough. So I was hoping that they that they also help. Um, and I felt that more ver variety is actually more important here than uh, having the right staining. Um, yeah, coming to the modeling part. So for feature extraction, I used Lunar Dino Small, um, which is actually quite a small model with 22 million parameters. I actually tried out uh, a lot of other models, uh, for example, ResNet50, which has the same size as Lunar Dino, but I also tried larger models, like larger vision, vision transformers, VitB and Swin V2B. And although they are four times larger, they actually performed significantly worse than the uh, models pre-trained on histopathology images. After the competition, also playing around with PyCon a little bit. Um, and definitely the step up from, from classic vision transformers to the histopathology images, that's a really big step. PyCon might improve a little bit over, over Lunar Dino, but I can't say for sure. Um, my tests were also relatively small. And I ran inference then uh, with Float16 on the T4 GPUs and actually felt that that wasn't even the bottleneck. It felt like uh, the whole data pre-processing was actually the bottleneck in the end. So that's all just for creating the um, the extracted features. And on top of that, I then ran uh, another deep learning model, first one um, called ClamSB, I uh, used during the competition. Uh, it's an open source model, but it wasn't uh, permissive for uh, commercial use. So after the competition, I actually replaced that with a BMIL just to show that you get basically to the same results with a very similar model um, that doesn't have the same license requirements. Both of these models are very similar. CLAM and IBML both use an attention-like mechanism. So they basically create like a score per tile. And then they're just creating a weighted sum of all tiles, of all tile features. And then they run the classification of this on this weighted sum. And the CLAM model is a little bit different from ABML because it also additionally to the, to the, to the classifier on all the combined, combined data also trains um, tile level um, classifiers and um, tries to use that to improve the end result. Interestingly enough, it actually didn't change performance much on this example here. Uh, a little bit on my training methods. Um, they were actually pretty standard. Um, because cross-validation was an issue, I used uh, five folds for cross-validation, always leaving, leaving out 20% of the training data. 
um, and then averaged over my five models. Didn't really get to try out training one model 100%. I guess likely, I mean, it could have performed better. I don't know. Um, I used a one cycle learning rate with a cosine schedule and um, relatively large dropout and weight decay. Although I have to say, I spent quite a bit of time on hyperparameter tuning, and I, in the end, wasn't much smarter than before. I felt I didn't really gain much from the hyperparameter tuning. There was also too much variability between my cross validation and the final um, public leaderboard score, and that made it really hard to find perfect parameters. And for me, the key here was rather in using more data than finding good hyperparameters. Yeah, interesting findings. Um, yeah, quickly want to highlight uh, again that I struggled a lot with the PNG data format. I actually spent weeks trying to make the data processing work. Um, I basically alternatively ran out of RAM disk or uh, hit the deadline for the submissions. It was actually quite a uh, time-consuming um, debugging process because the submissions were relatively slow. So the um, the iteration time was relatively large. So, so I think in the future, it could help to use um, a data format that also allows uh, lower resolutions. Yeah, and um, I experimented quite a bit with the CLAM model and thought I can make it better. For example, the other label is very different semantically from all the other labels. It's not really a tumor subtype, and there are lots of tiles on a high-grade serious carcinoma slide can also be healthy healthy slides. And so I so I actually adapted this CLAM model so that the logic um, basically maps better to this to the semantics. Unfortunately, that didn't uh, improve our model score at all. In general, I felt most things that made a lot of intuitive sense in my case didn't work out in the end. And keeping it simple was usually uh, the better choice. And in retrospect, I guess I would even do some other things more simple. Um, yeah, I think, for example, up email is definitely the better choice on CLAM just because it's much simpler and seem to perform as well. Um, one other point is in my my model in the end was just this average over five times the same model, just trained on different uh, data subsets. Lots of Kaggle winning solutions usually use more complex bagging. So I think one could also easily improve the score by um, doing some more bagging. And I think in the end, the key to my approach really was just getting a really uh, diverse training data set. Yeah. 